Hi and welcome to this video in which I want to look at Birmingham New Street which is one of the simsig.co.uk simulations and these simulations have been built by a guy who actually helped what was then rail track which was now network rail to actually design an interface for a modern signaling control center so what you're seeing here is very accurate most of these are based as far as possible on actual practice and they have lots of different timetables and what i want to do is really just move along the screen if you look here you can see this um it isn't a massive control panel although because of the volume of trains there's kind of a lot to keep yourself busy and they say on the website that you can't really handle this with one person I'm doing okay at the minute but I kind of think that that only happens because all of these trains are running to time pretty much and it's set on easy mode and all those kinds of things but I thought if I just walk through some of the things that I've learned um, because I think actually even though it's quite a complex track layout it's quite a regular service in and out of Birmingham New Street so there's lots of things that happen lots of times and other routes that really aren't used very often. So we're going to start here at, uh, I guess you could call it the southeast of Birmingham, which is the line from Coventry. And you can see here, there's a couple of train describer panels for each of the different approaches. They're kind of in funny places, but this one here is the train describer coming in. It's kind of useful. As soon as the train appears on this, you'll get the notification in your messages window. But uh, even at this point, we can click on that and we can get the train information. First thing of, of significance is that there are some complex platform arrangements here. You'll notice that all of these platforms are bi-directional. So a train can go into any of them from this direction and it can go into any of them from this direction. So what we tend to find is trains coming in from Coventry tend to go into platform two or three and there doesn't seem to be very much logic in that because you would have thought it would always use platform three but it doesn't so be careful of that check the platforms as they arrive i tend to leave these uh this signal here on manual rather than auto and that's just to stop uh trains just rolling into the wrong platform for which obviously you lose points <clears throat> and if you're a passenger that might be slightly annoying Trains coming in from the Birmingham direction into Birmingham International from New Street direction, you tend to get, I guess, four different sorts of trains. So the 1B trains are basically the trains to London Euston. The, um, you then have these 1G trains, which are trains that usually terminate at Birmingham International. And most often these class one trains will terminate in platform one. So you've got to be a little bit careful. I tend to leave this signal on auto but I have to kind of queue it up. I mean, I notice now actually that this one's going straight through and this one isn't. So I could actually take off the automatic button there. That route is still set for the, the two Y trains, which are the ones that go all the way to Coventry or further on. And then there are trains that back here, a two I train, and they also, they're the stopping train, but which uh, terminates at Birmingham International and they tend to reverse in platform three. So a couple of little fun bits there, but generally there's not a massive volume of trains, so it's kind of manageable. I'm running the simulation one to one at the minute, so in real time, and it is kind of manageable. Now here, most trains go straight through Stetchford into Birmingham. The only exception so far I've seen is a couple of class four freights will go up the Stetchford line and effectively they're bypassing Birmingham. They tend to go up the Perry Bar Grand Junction Railway, um, uh, which ends up over here. They pop out the top there. So um, that's all fairly easy. So I tend to leave these on automatic because 90%, 95% of the trains go straight through. Same in this direction. Uh, the other thing is there is one passenger train. Well, I've seen one so far. I don't know how many more there will be, which has a 1P head code. And that's a train which is the Wrexham uh, to London Marleybone line. And again, that comes in from Perry Bar, comes down the avoiding line around Birmingham and joins here. And likewise, you'll get a train, I can't remember what the head code, 1S maybe, that comes up this way. And again, just be a bit careful. As they appear here, click on them, just kind of get a look. If you see Birmingham New Street, you're probably fine. 
otherwise just kind of pay pay a bit of attention and the easiest way to do it I tend to find is to use these auto buttons so that I don't forget to cancel the route um, by the time the next train is coming up otherwise what will happen is if my uh, Stetchford train or my diverting train is coming up here and I suddenly think I oh, know these are wrong the train itself will stop at the signal and tell you that it's got the wrong route at least it probably will um, but if you try and cancel the route while the train's still approaching then you'll lose points and all kinds of stuff happens this train will then have to stop and call the control and say it saw an uh, adverse signal aspect and all those kinds of things so i tend to use the buttons if i know the next train is going to divert here then i'll just unauto these and let them reset by themselves so that's fine so moving in a bit closer we then have the main uh, i guess this would be the eastern end which is the up direction because it's usually up to london and it looks quite complicated but fortunately again there tend to be fairly regular services here so what we have here this um, saltley train describer is the entrance to here and to here so this is the line uh Borsley junction this is the line here that comes in from leamington and oxford and stratford on avon and that comes up here and this line will then appear at the top this line here is the line from derby and so this comes into proofhouse junction and this arrives here now we've got some funny things with the signaling if the train arrives here from derby it's no problem you can just signal it straight through however we've actually got a slot here between the saltley signal box and our signal box so when saltley wants to send a train that arrives here then it will send a slot request it'll come up in the messages window as a green message and what you then have to do is quite straightforward you click on this signal which is a saltley signal if you right click any of them you can see the number that's saltley signal 87 you click it like a normal route set and you either click onto that signal or you click down to this signal and that depends whether the service is heading for the wl lines which are the stour lines or the Derby lines up here. Now the reason you've got to be very, very careful is although some platforms can be accessed from both lines, you'll notice here that the furthest platform that the WL lines can reach is platform 10. And if you come in from here, you'll notice that the um, you can only reach platform seven from here without crossing over um, at this point here onto the WL lines and coming in. So what does that mean? Well, the timetable fortunately is pretty good. So most often the Derby trains will go up the top along the Derby lines. Most of them will either reverse here and then go back um, either to Derby or to Bordesley Junction, depending on obviously where they're going. Some of them continue up onto the line there. So they tend to be fairly regular and that's not too much of a problem. Occasionally, some of the trains will need to cross from Bordesley Junction down onto the WL line so they can access these lower platforms and that might be because they're going up the west coast towards Carlisle and Scotland and Manchester and those kinds of things so obviously it depends same kind of rules as usual as the trains approaching here click the head code find out which route you'll see DEL if it's supposed to go along the Derby lines and you'll see WL if it's supposed to be on the Stour lines down here so that's all uh, kind of fairly straightforward. I tend to leave this signal on auto because um, all of these trains go straight through from Coventry into Birmingham New Street and not many trains cross here. A couple do, but not many. So I tend to leave that on auto just to make that a bit easier. Likewise for trains coming out on the Stour lines, most of them will either go to Coventry or they'll go down this Curzon Street cord down towards either Litchfield, which is this line, or to Bescott and Perry Bar. Oh, sorry, uh, yeah, Bescott and Perry Bar in that direction. Uh, or they'll go to Coventry. Sometimes a train from the north here will come in and it will want to go to Borsley Junction because usually a cross country train heading to Oxford, Leamington, Reading, that kind of direction. So if that's the case, it will come up here. It will cross over the line here if it's going into Borsley Junction. Um, I'm not actually sure if there's a signalled route. I think there's a signalled route from here to the Derby lines as well. Um, but I don't know if I've sent the train to Derby or whatever. So I tend to leave that one off automatic 
just because there's lots of decisions here about which way to go um, and again you don't want a train getting to a green light stopping asking you what's going on um, especially when you've got loads of train ready to start buzzing in your ear and all the rest of it so the trains from coming into here and going out other than that are fairly straightforward be a bit careful about train regulation so you'll get local trains like this 2n43 which is going to come up onto the derby line so that means it's going to come over the bridge and into here and what might happen is you'll get another train that approaches here or here that it asks to signal through you've got to be a bit careful because sometimes this this appears here and you think oh quick route it all the way through to here and then you suddenly realize that the local train is actually timetabled to get to this point before that train so as with any busy simulation don't set too much route in one go um, otherwise you'll come a cropper uh, when we get down to here we've got an interesting uh, signaling system and that's because the junction here is very close to the station and there is not enough overlap for this signal the overlap is that um, a gap so that a train can stop if it goes past the red the red light so what you have to do when you set a signal is you click here you then click on to either this signal and you'll see them both flashing you then have to click either this arrow 805 or this arrow 806 and that will determine which direction the overlap goes in. Obviously, normally <clears throat> you would set the overlap in the direction that the train is going in. Um, and I think I've always been able to do that. But sometimes if you've got a train approaching here, even if this train is going down to Four Oaks, then you might still set the overlap in that direction before you're able to actually set the signal to cross the junction. But you have to do that click, click, and onto one of the overlap arrows in order to set that. Um, coming back the other way, you have to do the same thing for the same reason. The junction is very close to the station. So again, click, click, and onto an arrow to set the overlap. Now, because almost all the trains go around the curve here, I leave that signal on auto, and it's only a very occasional freight train or those Rexham trains that go around the loop uh, over to Stetchford. There are quite a few services that go down the Litchfield line, so you'll be sending a lot here, getting a lot through. Again, just be a bit careful because you also have trains arriving here from the Bescott direction, uh, which will arrive here. Generally, whichever one lights up the approach first will arrive first. Um, it's generally the case. Freight trains might come through a bit more quicker than expected. So just be a bit careful. Um, and likewise, sometimes you'll have two, sometimes three trains all coming around this loop at the same time, usually one to Four Oaks, another to Bescott, and there may be an empty coach in stock or something. So again, that's all kind of fairly straightforward. Uh, again, watch out for these local trains. Some of them, some of these two, oh, there aren't any in here at the minute. Some of these class two trains, you sometimes have one in platform 1A. It'll come up here and go around Curzon Street where while another one at almost the same time will depart for the bridge. Usually the bridge is the first service to arrive. Just do a quick check. When's it due at Aston? 10.45. When's the next one due at Aston? 10.47, whatever. Just be careful here, otherwise you'll put the trains in the wrong order. And if they're scheduled to stop here, then one's going to make the other one quite a few minutes later. When we come to Birmingham New Street itself, uh, all of the platforms are double-ended, but some of the trains are full length and some are not. So you notice here 1B34, if you click on it, it'll tell you that it's a nine coach Pendolino, which is why it takes up the whole platform. Whereas if you click on 1V49, you'll find it's a four car Voyager. So that only takes up half the platform. So you'll see on these timetables, they're all usually will have a platform with an A or a B or sometimes an M for middle. Uh, if it's M, I just plant the, um, the train in as if it's going to go the whole length of the platform. Um, you'll just have to kind of work that out. That's kind of straightforward. So yeah, on this one, you'll notice it's just platform two because it, it fills up the whole platform. So it doesn't specify A or B. Another thing that's quite cool about this is um, 1A is that there aren't any overlaps. So what that means is even if this train is pulling out of the station, let's well, this is a B train, so it's going to go this way. So supposing it's going this way, I can still pull a train into platform three and not need an overlap at the end, which you do on most stations. 
and partly that's because it would be really really complicated to interlock everything but also the station would be almost unusable if all of that locking was taking place so they've set the line speed at 10 miles an hour i think it's 10 it might even be five so that trains can pull into half of a platform so i can put another train into 9b while this one's here i can pull that train out while that train's pulling out in the opposite direction i can kind of do most of the things that you would um, hope to be able to do just by using these half platforms notice there's a 4c platform at this end that's a bay platform you'll get local trains coming in from this direction that will go into 4c uh, and they obviously reverse and go back up towards wolverhampton uh the norton line here the line to um to kings norton and to gloucester cheltenham bristol that kind of direction as you can see the approach is quite short there isn't much to do here all of these i just leave on auto um and the only issue to watch out for is there's quite a lot of traffic and you'll find very quickly that if you keep a train at this signal for too long you'll start getting trains backing up behind it quite quickly so you tend to find the class two trains will always go into platform 8a like this one is and then almost all of them will continue around this loop and down here to four oaks so they tend to run in this case long bridges down here um, and that's running all the way around to four oaks as a stopping train and the fast trains will do one of two things so this one is cardiff central to nottingham so in this case it's actually going to pull in the 7a and pull out the other end otherwise they go into platform 12b usually uh, they'll change code and they'll be ready to go back again in the opposite direction so there isn't really much um that's not in there anymore there isn't really much to know just kind of keep an eye on it one of the problems with this simulation is the number of notifications you're getting for train ready to start and trains appearing on the system to be honest i mostly only care about two places where trains appear which we'll see at the end that's um, rowley regis and bescott and that's just because um, they're unusual routes and i'll show you why in a minute uh, another feature of birmingham uh, is these via buttons you see f e d g b c a and an a there and the via buttons are basically just to allow you to route the train and in some cases even though there's only one route you still need to use the via button so if i want to go from say 1m01 if that's going into platform 8 well as far as i can see there is only one way to get into platform 8 which is that way but you still have to click start signal via button end signal if you don't do that you'll get a message saying you need to use via buttons for the route and that's how you know that you've done it wrong same when you come out i mean here sometimes it seems to work but most of the time you have to click signal via button um, out signal here and you can um, you can carry on up northwards so this is the line up to wolverhampton um, one thing that's interesting is this signal here i'm not quite sure why but there's no auto button um, now what that is supposed to allow you to do is it allows you to reverse trains here and for them to come up onto that line and at the minute that would be blocked by the overlap from this signal so i'm guessing that's why it doesn't have an auto button in reality so far this is uh, 20 to 11 in the morning and i've run this timetable from midnight so far i haven't had any trains uh, running backwards up from platforms one and two all of these are lines going southbound towards london direction so at the minute it hasn't been a problem i tend to try and signal things straight through but again if you get caught you'll get an indication on your messages saying that the train stuck at a red and that's just a useful little heads up um, by the way sometimes you'll get you know four train ready to starts all at the same time so you've got to try and kind of manage all of that so then this is the last section of the uh, of the simulation the soho depot is where most of the multiple units get stored at night where they come out in the morning it's not too difficult you'll get a call from the depot as you do on most simulations most of the time in fact all of the time so far all of these trains coming from the depot are destined for new street in which case you signal it from this signal through to this signal through to here and you end up at the north junction at soho and then you bring the train back reversing crossing over here and back in now you can't um there's no there's no berth on here so you can't assign a number so if you want to actually interpose the code onto it i usually put it down here so that when the train comes back it will um, pick up the code on the way through 
Be careful, however, like most reversing moves, you don't always know how long it's going to take. And there are usually quite a few services coming from Wolverhampton. So as soon as the train stops here, if you bring press F2 and bring up the train list, you can see the expected departure time <clears throat> of the reversing move. And then you can work out whether to let, say, this service pass or whether that train's ready to move and it can move. Trains coming into the depot, much easier, coming from the south up here into the reverse siding and back up into the depot. So nothing really too tricky. Um, this cord here goes onto the Starbridge line. So these lines under here are um, controlled by Starbridge signal box uh, or Walsall. Uh, what is it? Which one is it? Saltley signal box. No, not Saltley. Uh, well, it must be Starbridge. Starbridge signal box. This is the main line uh, that passes under here. So there aren't many services that go up here. There have been a couple, a couple of freights, a couple of network rail kind of trains, but not really very much. So again, I keep the signal on auto for the Wolverhampton line. If you need to send a train up here, then like most of these, you hit the slot request, which is telling Starbridge signal box you have a train to send in. Once that gets granted, the disc will stop flashing. It will become a solid white, and then you will be able to set your signal onto that Saltley signal, which is, uh, sorry, Starbridge, which is 21. And then the train goes round. Like I say, not many. Um, I've had about three or four, I think, so far. So that's kind of pretty easy. Uh, likewise, you get very few coming out, but you have a similar advanced slot request. It works the same way as it does over here that when the train arrives you will get that flashing up as an advanced slot request you then signal the train through to here and then once you've done that then Starbridge can set a route from uh, his signal to your signal and the train's ready to come through now you've got a bit of a loop thing going on here it's not used a massive amount so the most common route is certain trains from Bescott and Walsall will come up the junction and most of them will continue directly to New Street. Most of the slower ones will go around the bottom and they will then come around the loop and they'll come into New Street that way. So some of them come in direct up the junction. Occasionally one will go up to the north junction and go around here. So there is one service that arrives from here, goes around the loop and actually goes up to Rowley Regis and towards Stourbridge and Worcester in that direction. So every now and then you'll get a funny, but most of the time that doesn't happen. I've never done anything here. I've just left all of this um, all, all automatic. Haven't had any need to do anything, so that's easy enough. The other thing I've done is because lots of trains come here, lots of local trains, uh, like 2815 started at New Street and ends up kind of coming up through here. So I leave that signal autoed so that all of these trains will just come through without me having to remember to set the signal. Then when a train appears in Bescott, this is why I'm interested in it, I'll click on it as soon as it arrives and I'll work out, is it going by Aston? In which case I can obviously just set the route across here. Or is it going up to Soho Junction and into New Street? So that signal I don't leave on automatic because it's about, maybe not quite 50-50, but half the trains go straight through half of them go up roughly. So I, I leave that one off automatic and that gives me a chance. When you send a train up here towards New Street, again, just be a bit careful with the timings because I tend to find that by the time a train appears here, if it's got coming up this way, at least two services will have to pass it before you wanna take out the auto so the route cancels to, to give you that line in from there. Um, so just be a bit careful. That little route here takes a bit longer than you would think to get around. So don't just kind of think, oh, here's a train, set the route all the way through. You'll have two services um, on top of you before you know anything about it. Um, that's mostly it. The, uh, the other reason I said the Rowley Regis one was important because all these signals are autoed if I get a slot request from Stourbridge, obviously it means I need to go here, work out what trains I've got coming. When does this one need to go through? Do I need to wait for this one? Do I need to wait for this one? Can I cancel the signals now and send it through? All those kind of things. So um, I don't think I've had any except in the middle of the night. So that certainly doesn't happen very often. But other than that, it takes a bit of getting used to. Um, you obviously got to learn 
learn kind of where the trains come from and where they don't. So for instance, I haven't seen anything from Curzon Street yet. So for all I know, well, we're not going to get anything. Um, platforms really talked about. Uh, you'll find that if a train arrives at Borsley Junction, it appears here, um, sorry, it appears here much more quickly than a train that arrives from the Diaby line. So you see here you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight signals a distance before that train will get to the junction whereas here you've got one two three and it's that signal is actually that signal there so um so again just be really careful don't set too many routes um too quickly these crossovers very rarely i don't know if i've used them yet and probably use them for empty stock movements um You'll notice here, just a quick note as I finish as well, that a very typical scenario, this 2C08, um, it's actually um, just come from Coventry and it wants to get into platform 3A. Now, if I'm not careful and I signal that all the way through to 3A, almost immediately 2I09 wants to leave platform 4 to do its local service. So, you know, I tend to wait for trains to get to the signal. And if it's going to cross the path of another train, just have a quick click. Is this leaving before this one's due to arrive? And if it is, again, regulate the trains properly so you don't end up um, with a big tangle and loads of delays. Um, you've got some stuff in the sidings here. Uh, I haven't used that. It's just been parked in there all day. I think one's a spare Voyager, if I remember rightly. Uh, and another thing is, um, sorry, when you are shunting uh, empty coaching stock in the morning you might sometimes find there's one that i remember in platform five or seven i can't remember which platform it was where you've put the trains in there and you send in a third train but it doesn't quite fit and it um tends to then overhang the points and it locks up the uh, this end of, or some of the platforms at this end of the station if that happens all i did was signaled 7b into 7a and then hopefully you've seen this already, but if you bring it up and let's say it's at this platform, so let's look at an example. So 1V25 up here, if uh, I needed it to move backwards, uh, I kind of wouldn't because it's going to be pulling out of the, the, the train station that way. But let's say I needed to move it backwards, all I would do at the minute, 1V25 is pointing down because and it's waiting to leave. Um, but if I right click 1V25, I can get to reverse direction and what will happen is it will obviously switch to go up and it will pull all that way till it gets to a signal and then because it's still in the right platform it will reverse direction again but stay where it is so you can use that to shuffle the trains up a bit and likewise sometimes you have two trains in the same end of the platform like here and maybe the first one of them leaves uh, it still looks like the whole half of the platform is occupied you then try and send another train into platform 9A and it doesn't fit because the second train is still here. So again, you find out what it is, you tell it to shunt forwards and it will pull all the way to the signal. You can also use these um, head signals as well just to give you a bit of extra distance if you need to. Um, but generally speaking, I think that only happened once or twice. You need to do a little bit of fiddling. Um, but otherwise, I think it's, um, it's very much doable. It's very interesting. The main issues like all busy um, all busy simulations don't set the routes too long at, um, in one go and just be careful of regulating times and stuff so that if a train's very early which does happen you don't start blocking up the station bringing in an early train when there's another two who want to leave uh, but other than that um, hopefully that explains most of the workings of Birmingham New Street congratulations to SimSig for a great simulation and hopefully some more of you will enjoy using this